So this one looks like maybe scalp, like head and neck. And yeah, then, good. Big yeah, hairs. Yeah, kind of got this like broad, bald, bumpy, and bubbly area. <laughs> so good for Nevis sebaceous. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, Nevis sebaceous. Like you said, bald, I think is really helpful. When I see a big excision of this and suddenly I'm on the scalp of a young person and I've got big antigen hairs and then they're gone. And then on the other side of the lesion, I see them again. That's nevus sebaceous usually because nevus sebaceous usually lacks big hair follicles and instead has big sebaceous glands. Depending on how old the patient is, younger patients, the sebaceous glands are small and immature. As the patient gets older and goes through puberty, they have androgens that then allow the sebaceous glands to expand and make more lipid. Sebaceous glands are big. They connect straight up to the surface like so. Oftentimes you have epidermal acanthosis that resembles a wart of Ruka or seborrheic keratosis, although sometimes you don't. Like, look, this is not very dramatic. I mean, really almost normal epidermis, except maybe a little loss of the reedy. Ah, and then look, we've got some basaloid stuff here. So you can get a variety of basaloid things. Some of it's hair follicle, like induction-like change. Some of it's true hair follicle tumors, like trichelemoma, trichoepithelioma, trichoblastoma. You can see all sorts of benign hair follicle tumors and some sweat gland tumors like syringocystadenoma papilliferum. I've got videos about all those things on my channel. All that stuff tends to occur and arise within nevus sebaceous. So I think it's a nice like kind of, it's like fertile soil for growing all of these unusual adnexal tumors. And very, very rarely you can see true malignancies like true basal cell carcinoma or apocrine carcinoma in a nevus sebaceous. But in my experience, that's quite rare. The vast majority of times when I see a tumor growing in a nevus sebaceous, it ends up being a benign adnexal tumor. And look here, that looks very basaloid. It's got palisading, but what's that? It's a papillary mesenchymal body. So whether you call this an immature hair follicle, like induction, or a tiny little bit of, you know, beginning trichoepithelioma, it doesn't matter. Benign, benign adnexal, right? I've even signed some of them out. Like if it was for a non-dermatologist, I would say nevus sebaceous with a variety of benign um, adnexal tumors. And also the other clue for nevus sebaceous is usually you'll find or not usually, sometimes you will find apocrine glands or eccrine glands that begin to look apocrine and have larger round nuclei with central prominent nuclei, so so-called apo eccrine glands. So apocrine glands or eccrine glands that look apocrine in the dermis is another really good clue uh, for nevus spaces because you're not supposed to have apocrine glands on your scalp normally. And remember, these are hamartomas uh, that grow unusual adnexal structures that are disorganized. Um, uh, so nevus by the word meaning birthmark in Latin, uh, not meaning melanocyte, even though in modern usage we use it in Dermpath to mostly refer to melanocytic things. This is one of the non-melanocytic nevi, and that's because it's a birthmark, not actually a melanocytic um, lesion.